All right guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about the Mac Mini M4 released by Apple for live streaming, mostly using OBS, but you can use it for any other live streaming software, of course, that can support Mac, all right? But I know most of you guys use OBS, so I'm gonna give you my thoughts. By the way, I've been using it for over 30 days now, maybe more than that. And I think I can actually confidently say that this is the best budget live streaming computer right now in 2025 and i'm gonna tell you why in this video let's go what's going on guys my name is sam you're watching our production tips and tools helping you master live streaming so the mac mini m4 guys by the way the reason why i'm talking about this computer is because i'm always looking for something like cheaper solutions you know obs if you use obs or most live streaming software they actually require you to have a powerful computer especially those ones that you have to be installed on your computer now in today's video we're gonna be focusing on obs and you know if you streaming on pc i use pc for live streaming you really need to have a good pc with dedicated graphics card and a good processor and things like that now if you're gaming that's another topic so i have actually decided to test i was looking for a secondary pc for streaming because i had multiple clients i wanted to be streaming different events at the same time so basically using the same computer so i decided to test first i tested a cheap pc and it didn't work for me so i returned it it was really lagging and everything it was actually running an i7 i don't know which generation but i7 intel processor it's one of these uh, small factor pcs from dell optiplex so it did not work so i returned it i had paid like 300 dollars actually 350 something like that so i I decided to try the mac mini which is right now as we speak is actually the basic one is at six hundred dollars all right six hundred dollars and you're getting 10 core cpu you're getting 16 gig of unified memory which is like ram on pc kind of thing and then you're getting the basic one 256 gig of ssd storage built into it so that's the one that i took i didn't want to spend a lot of money again this was my secondary computer streaming computer so i didn't want to spend a lot of money and i wanted to test and see actually if it can run obs really well so guys i'm super super impressed by the computer and i would recommend it 100 and i can confidently say that this is actually the cheapest yet best live streaming computer that you can get if you're on a budget really for streaming using obs it runs obs smoothly i run multiple scenes and super complex scenes where i have a lot of things kind of playing back in the background and it does run it no problem guys no problem i can record the stream at the same time and uh, cpu usage it never goes beyond actually 10 percent which is really really good all right so it's always you know around seven percent eight percent ten percent is like the max that i get so you know i use things like srt to bring in cameras remotely like all the good stuff that i use i do on my main computer as well and this little baby actually has been able to handle all of that no problem now obviously the computer is not perfect it does come with some cones uh, and i'm gonna get into that in a moment but before i get to that let me talk about the good stuff obviously it's super powerful the computer is really 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 powerful okay it does not lag it doesn't it doesn't give you any any issue basically uh, it has an ethernet port that you can connect your ethernet cable for live streaming you don't want to rely on wi-fi which is really cool and it has an hdmi port so you can easily connect an hdmi monitor and that's pretty much it and it's very small so you can take it anywhere if you're traveling it could be your travel computer but at the same time you can use it in studio because it's very small in the box really when you receive it it's not gonna come with a lot of things it's just gonna be the cable that you need to plug it to power and the actual computer and that's pretty much it so now some of the cons that again it's no big deal for me i don't know if it's gonna be a big deal for you but i just still have to mention it some of the cons one the first one obviously you're gonna need to buy a monitor on the top of that which is normal if you, you were buying a pc anyways you, you need a monitor you need a keyboard and you need a mouse now another issue it has a bunch of thunderbolt and usb type c connections and one of the problems that you're gonna have if you have let's say you want to use a wired mouse or a wired keyboard you're gonna have issues being able to plug those especially most wired keyboard and mice come with the typical usb type a connection so it's gonna be an issue you need some sort of adapters to be able to connect those or anything else that you want to connect via usb really it's all type c and thunderbolt okay but the good news is 
You can actually use things like uh, wireless keyboards, something like this. It do work really well. This is my new keyboard that I use from Logitech. And I have a wireless mouse as well. So they do work so far, no problem. So if you're ready to invest in those wireless keyboards, you can actually do that. Or you can actually invest in USB type C, still gonna work, no problem. But another way, another solution actually would be to get a dock. So personally, I actually got a dock that can actually connect via Thunderbolt and gives me a bunch of USB type A and some extra HDMI, you know, inputs if I want to connect multiple HDMI monitors and things like that. So that's going to be an option as well. I think it would be something that I would actually recommend to most of you guys really. Just to have that option of anytime you want to connect something USB type A, you have that port available. You don't have to struggle with it. Now, another problem you have obviously it only has one HDMI port. So if you want to connect multiple monitors or multiple screens, like, you know, in my studio here, I always have like multiple monitors. That's going to be an issue as well. So that's something to consider for me. It's my secondary streaming computer. So I only use one monitor. But if this is your main, which I will still recommend for as a main streaming setup kind of thing, you, you could still use it. And if you want to do that, maybe most of you guys may end up using two monitors. I do recommend to use two monitors, especially if it's your kind of content creation station slash live streaming. So you will need a dock. Okay. So somehow having a dock with this computer is going to be a must. Another problem is going to be storage. Okay. Another con. Okay. So again, the best model that I actually have only comes with 256 gig of storage, which is almost nothing really. If you're dealing with video, this is not going to be enough. So if you want to upgrade, you can actually upgrade on the Apple website. Basically you can upgrade the storage. Okay. But the more you add, even like to get 500, and 12 gig, which is still not enough, you kind of have to pay like a thousand dollars. So you can see that like the more you add storage, the more the money goes up. And in my opinion, it's not worth it. Okay, unless you have money and money is not a problem for you. But if money is a problem for you, like it is for me, then you have to think about, you know, how not to spend it recklessly. All right, so to do that, I would recommend you get an external SSD because it works perfectly. Everything you do on that Mac computer, guys, make sure all your files, all your videos, everything is actually saved. They're being saved on an external SSD. External SSDs, they are super fast. You can even edit videos off of those SSDs. And the one that I recommend is actually called the SanDisk. For two terabyte guys, you can only pay, you pay only 136 right now on amazon.com. That's the one that I have and I'll actually link it down below if you're interested because that's where I save all my videos. When I, I live stream and I'm recording clips and or recording the actual live stream, I record to that external SSD. Everything I do, even when I'm editing videos on that computer, everything is actually saved on that SSD. So I keep my 256 gig of storage just for the computer to run off of the operating system apps and all the good stuff, like everything that's kind of internally on the computer that I cannot run on an external SSD, everything else, all the files, everything where I use the external SSD. So that solves the problem. And again, you don't have to get the most expensive one just because of the storage. But other than that, guys, the computer it just runs smoothly. It's an Apple computer, of course, and it does the job for live streaming using OBS. Again, if you need a computer for live streaming and you are on a budget, a computer that's going to do the job, they can even use it as a creator, maybe to edit videos and do all the good stuff guys even the m1 the older versions they still work for editing and doing things like streaming and all the good stuff so imagine the m4 is like the latest processing chip by apple so it's super powerful and it is great so i would recommend it 100 percent and if you actually want to check out some of the settings that i use for live streaming especially using that one because again it's not gonna have the dedicated graphics card that we used to have with pc computers some of the settings in obs are going to be completely different this is a different version of obs that's made specifically for m chips from apple so if you want to see those settings to make sure you nail them i'm gonna make that video showing you all the settings that you need if you're using the Mac Mini M4 
for live streaming with OBS, of course. And that video is going to be linked right here. So make sure you check it out. And I'll see you there, guys. Take care.